Hello and welcome! Today we're doing a question from Lee Code called Integer to Roman. This is the sequel to Roman to Integer, which we've done before. Both are part of the top 150 question playlist. If you're interview prepping, you know there are three main playlists. There's Lee Code 75, Blind 75, and a top 150. So we're just doing questions from all three playlists. They're linked down below and if you are interested, want to follow along, of course, you know, subscribe. So back to this question, we are given seven different symbols that represent Roman numerals with the corresponding values, like so. And Roman numerals are formed by appending the conversions of decimal place values from highest to lowest. And doing that conversion has the following rules. If the value does not start with four or nine, we select the symbol of the maximal value that can be subtracted from the input. We append that symbol to our result subtract that value from that original number we're trying to convert into a Roman numeral and just convert the remainder to the Roman numeral. So they're sort of telling us how we want to do this. And if the value starts with four or nine, we want to use the subtractive form and feel free to pause this, read this more in depth. But basically all it is, is instead of writing four with four I's, we're going to be writing I V. All that means is we're subtracting the value of I from V. And there are six instances for which we want to use the subtractive form. That's for IV, IX, 4, 9, XL, XC. So we're just taking X, which is 10, subtracting that from L and C. And CD and CM, which are 400 and 900. And only powers of 10, I, X, C, M can be appended consecutively at most three times to represent multiples of 10. You cannot append 5, 50, or 500 multiple times. And again, if you need to append a symbol four times, use the subtractive form. So given an integer, we want to convert it to a Roman numeral. Example one, we have 3,749. So we're going to have three M's in our output because M is a thousand and we can put in thousand three times in our number. So once we do that, our remaining number, right? Because we're going to take away 3,000. Our remaining number will be 749. To convert that into Roman numerals, we're going to add 1D, which is 500, then two Cs to get 700. Then for 40, XL, it's 10 less than 50. And then to write 9, it's going to be IX. So in total, this is our output. And example two, we have 58. So L is 50, V is 5, and then we have three ones after that, summing to 58. And example three, we have 1,994. We put in 1M, so that takes care of the 1,000. Now we have 900. We can't put in any more Ms. We don't have more 1,000. So the next biggest number we can make is CM, which is 900, then XC for 90, and IV for 4. Okay, given an integer, we want to convert it to a Roman numeral. If you haven't already, this is a great time to pause this video right now and give it a shot yourself. I'm going to be moving forward, assuming you've already done that. Okay, let's think about this. If we want to convert an integer to a Roman numeral, we know we want to use our greatest values first, right? Roman numerals are always written from largest to smallest. So say my input number is the following example. I have 1,902. How do I know which symbols to use to form my Roman numeral? Well, I know I want to use my largest number first, right? So what I'm going to do is make a list with all of my symbols and corresponding values in order from largest to smallest. So I'm going to call that my values list and it's a list of lists. I'm going from a thousand all the way down to one. What I'm going to do is a loop through this list. So for n and symbol in my values list. So n here is going to be this number and symbol is going to be the corresponding symbol for it. I want to see what I get if I divide my number by this n over here. So I'm going to call this count and it's going to equal number integer divided by n. So what this means is if I have 1,902 and the first n and symbol that I'm on is over here. So writing this out, this is my n and this is my symbol. And actually, let's change this number to be 2,902. Now what I want to do is keep count of how many times I can put a thousand in to my number over here. So count right now is going to equal two. This is an integer division, right? We can put in 1,000 twice. We don't really care about remainders right now. So if my count is greater than zero, if I can put this current number into form my input number, I know I need to use this symbol. So I'm going to go in my if condition. So if count is greater than zero, I'm going to append it to my resulting string. So let's also define that over here. Resulting is going to start off as empty. I'm going to append this symbol to my resulting array. And I want to append it as many times as I need it for how many counts we have. So result plus equals symbol times count. 
So if my count is two, I know I want to put in this symbol twice. So let's keep track of this over here. The result right now is going to store two M's. So now that we've taken care of this two, we don't really care about this digit anymore. We want to change our input num to not include that digit. So my new number is going to equal what I get in the remainder after this integer division. So number modded by n. And a mod is a remainder. So right now, my number is going to be 902. So I go back in this for loop and n and symbol are moved down over here. And if I go and count number divided by n, that would be 1. 500 can go into my 902 once, but that would be wrong. We don't actually want a D, right? This is 900. We know we can write a 9 by using CM, which means we're subtracting C from the M over here. So how are we going to take care of this? If this wasn't a concern, right, if we didn't really need to care about the special cases, subtractive cases of four or nine, we could have just gone looping through greatest to smallest and just add our symbols as many times as we needed them. So instead, what we're going to do, we're also going to include the special cases. So what I'm going to do is add 900, 400, 90, 40, 9, and 4 to my list of values. So how do I write 900? Well, that's going to be CM. 400 is going to be CD. Then I also have a 90 and 40. So finding where they go, it's going to be right after this 100. We're going to have 90, which is going to be XC. Then we have 50 and then 40, which is XL. Then 9 and 4, which are going to go right after 10 and 5. So this is what our list of values is going to look like now, which means once we went back in our for loop, we're no longer at 500 and D, we're at 900 and CM. So now once we do an integer division, right, 902 and 900, we know we're going to have a count of one. CM can go into our number just once. And that count is greater than zero. So we're going to append our symbol CM to our result one time. So right now the result we're building up, the Roman numeral is going to have MMCM. And we want to change our number to reflect the fact that we are taking CM. So number is going to equal the remainder we get after taking CM. So dividing our number by 900, what's our remainder? That's just two. So now once we go back in our for loop, n and s are at 500 and d. But if we were to integer divide this, it's going to be zero. 500 would go into number zero times. So since count is not greater than zero, we don't go in this if condition and we just go back in our loop. Again, we're going to face the same thing, right? Two integer divide by 400 is zero. Count is not greater than zero. So we don't win this if we go back in our loop. So now we're at 100 and C and all of these will actually just give a zero up until we come to one over here. So once our number is finally one and our symbol is I, if we figured out what count was, so number integer divided by N, that is going to come out to a count of two. Since count is greater than zero, we are going in this if condition we're adding to the end of result, symbol times count. So symbol right now in our loop is defined as I. We're going to add this to result a total of count times. So we're going to have I, I. So now we're going to update what number is, what remainder do we get by dividing by this number over here? We don't get any remainder. This just goes in twice. So there is no remainder left, which means our current number is zero. And we have all the digits we need to form our Roman numeral. So in the end, all we have to do is just return our result. Now, if you are wondering why this works, right? Why can we just loop through? What we're doing is we're taking the biggest number possible first, right? We're getting rid of that. We're building up our result onward and we're moving on to the next smallest number. And for the other rules, right, we can only use multiples of 10 three times. Well, if we go to a smaller number, so if we're not at 1000, we're at 900, we'll never actually need to use this more than once. Because if we could have done that, that means this number that we're working with is at least 1,800. And if that was the case, well, then we could have just used the M instead, right? So we're using the greatest number that we have. Once we can't use any more, once we've exhausted that, then we move on to our smaller value. Then we go to the fives. So we're always going to use and prioritize the tens first, use as many as we can. And then we go smaller, which is why this works. So let's go ahead and submit this. I'm just going to get rid of this over here and submit unexpected indent. Oh, this should not be here either. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. 
Now we just did a complete walkthrough with an example with 1,902. All the other numbers in a valid range between one and 3,999 will work. So going over time and space complexity for time, we're looping through our vowels array, which is only a size of 13. So we're only in a loop 13 times. So we can actually say this is constant for time. It's not dependent on how big our number gets. So that's O of one for time. And for space, we're only keeping track of a resulting string and counts. So resulting string, this is actually not going to go past whatever we can make for 3,999. So we can also argue that this is constant for space O of one. So we just went ahead and solved integer to Roman. Now, if you have any questions with this whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. And if this video was helpful, like, comment, subscribe, share. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.